Welcome back again. In today's video, we're going to be wrapping up the room of secure web vulnerabilities. Remember that the room is part of the web fundamentals pathway. In the previous videos, we finished up on SSTI, we went over GWT, and uh, we performed some challenges. In today's video, we're going to be doing XXE and a challenge on GWT tokens. Remember that in the previous videos, we discussed the XML external entity uh, vulnerability. In this video, I'm going to put the link <coughs> in the video description. And the video here was part of a separate room called XXE, but it's useful uh, to get back to the video before you do the challenge or before you perform the challenge on this room. And also, we talked about JSON Web Tokens in previous challenges. You can get access to the video by going to that video, understanding JSON Web Tokens vulnerabilities. I'm going to also put the links in the video description. And uh, now let's get back to the room. So we have uh, task 19 all the way till task 25. So basically, I mean, I'm not going to spend much time on XSE. Uh, just we're going to go over the lab or the challenge here. So the challenge is about exploiting XML external entity injection. Okay, let's go that. Let's go to the challenge. So I have a web application, and the web application offers or it's uh, offers yeah, a registration form, and you can create an account by filling out the fields. So previously we uh, talked about how we can exploit ex XML external entity by injecting XML payloads, but it's not the case all the time. Sometimes you'll be uh, you'll you will, will face some login forms or registration forms and from these forms you have to find a way to or have to test for XML external entity or XSC I'm not gonna say the long name all the time just stick with the abbreviation or the short term XXE so basically we can uh, let's test we can create an account and let's turn on the proxy so create an account here's the request so as you can see we have an XML uh, in the request and XML is being used to handle the user registration and the user input so technically we don't need to write a payload we have already an XML uh, document here we can just inject our own payload in this XML and send it to the web application and see how it responds so I'm gonna go back to my notes and here let's try this one or I think I put the notes here okay let's try this one so replace the existing one with your uh, payload so what we did we just added two lines okay we add a doc type element and we added an entity so basically in the doc type we said that, that the main element or the root is foo and here we use the system and uh, also file to read the contents of a specific file in my case it is the SSH private key but if you try this it's not gonna work because of some permissions placed on the RDRSA that the uh, the data cannot read the uh, file so basically instead of the SSH we try to read the contents of password file Okay, and don't forget that the entity XSE should be called in one of the fields here. As you can see here, the form reveals the email field upon checking on the registration. So we put or we call our elements, okay, in the email field here. So we call it that by ampersand and by placing <coughs> semicolon at the end of the name at the end of the uh, entity and then we execute so we're gonna highlight that and intercept the response forward so as you can see the contents of the password file have been returned <coughs> okay forward as you can see the contents have been displayed on uh, by our by the application to the user or the client Let's see what is the question. How many users on the system? You just have to count the users here. Okay, count them, it will be 13. 
What is the name of the user with a UID of 1000? Okay, so I think we need a more organized view of this output. So we're gonna intercept the request again. Send out our payload. And intercept the response. This time it'll work, let's one more time. And here we replace <coughs> ATC pass WD. So the user UID or the UID 1000 belongs to the user Pera. So Pera has UID of 1000 and you can answer with that user. If you have problems answering the first question, just intercept the request with perp and count them on by line by line. Of course, don't count this line. You will find that the answer is 31 or 31 user. Okay, now the challenge or the last challenge is about brute forcing GWT tokens. Let me give you a um, kind of reminder about the GWT tokens. So basically, if you remember, a GWT token consists of three parts. The first part is the header. The second part is the payload, which contains your content. And the last part is the signature. And you remember that the signature is used for encrypting the payload and making sure that the, uh, making sure that the user is also authorized to access the resources they are trying to access. So basically every user has a GWT token and a GWT token is assigned to a user session to make sure that the user has the proper authorization over a specific resource. So we use the signature to make sure that the payload is encrypted and, this, and that the user uh, is who they claim to be. Uh, but we uh, also remember that if we can, when we, when we decode this payload, all right, from base64 to plain text, if we can change the algorithm from whatever to none, or if we can omit the signature part, or if we can just decode this base64 and change the algorithm to one that is vulnerable, which we can play with, we can actually bypass the authorization of the user. But in this scenario, we're not gonna do any of that. Suppose that the GWT token that you have is not vulnerable to any attack. So what you have to do here, the only option left for you is to brute force the signature. If you can brute force the signature, okay, and you find a secret, you can create your own GWT token and bypass. So let's see how we can apply this on this JWT token. So back <coughs> and here we have a tool called JWT Cracker. You can access the tool by going to its repo on uh, GitHub. Just issue git clone, okay, and clone the repo on your uh, machine. And don't forget to uninstall the machine using npm. If you don't know what's npm, just do sudo apt get install npm, and then do sudo npm install g or jwt cracker. After that, Type sudo jwt cracker and put here the token you're trying to boot for us. Enter. So now it's trying to crack the token. So as you can see, the secret has been found and it is pass. So you take that and answer with it. The answer is pass. Now, since we found the secret, which is pass, we can use that secret 
okay, to calculate another G JWT token. So let's take this token for example and go to JWT.io. So let's see here. Okay, so the algorithm is HS256, and as you can see, the name is John Do, and this is the signature. Since now we know the secret, which is passed to calculate the signature, we can just uh, calculate a new JWT token and modify these parameters. So if we go to page 64, encode and decode, and create a new JWT token, just for the sake of practice. So take the current one, or take the first part, decode. So, algorithm with H is 256, and type JWT, to JWT. So we're fine with this, no need to modify any of that. Let's take the next part, which is the payload, and which is what matters. Again, decode. All right, so here is your playground. Here is the place where most of the change happens. So basically, if you are trying to create a new token, uh, you would want to change one of the parameters here. Sometimes it could be the role of you on the side, it could be user, it could be the admin, so you want to change to admin most of the time if you want to elevate your privilege. Here is, we have only name, sub, and IIT. We can also change the name here to uh, whatever, say my name, okay, and take that, go to decode, uh, encode. So now we have new page 64. We go back. Uh, no, we go to here. So replace this part. And now, as you can see, I have a new token. Now you can also cut. Now for the signature, it changes. That's why you need to calculate the new signature by. Since we have the secret now, which is pass. The other part, which the signature is easy to find, just apply the algorithm here. And signature verified, yes. Not verified, verified. Okay, so use this algorithm to calculate your signature. Use the header, we have the header, and the payload. And here we have the comma, your 256 bit secret, which is in our case, it is pass. So we use this information to calculate the uh, secret. So type pass here. And as you can see, now we have a new uh, JWT token. You can use that if you want to inject the payload in a perp request to change the user role, to change whatever you would like to change. So here is now everything about JWT tokens. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video and next we will be going to, so we're done with this room. Let's check out what is left in the pathway. So vulnerabilities, so you have SSRF and we have another ZTH Web 2. And next, so we have in total four challenges. All right. So we're going to be doing them in the next videos. Stay tuned and see you in the next video.